This is James Fox with another video tutorial for QuickBooks Pro 2013. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to add a customer in QuickBooks. Now, one quick note before we start, I do recommend that if you're on the website to use this search field if you're looking for particular topics to learn about because there are a lot of tutorials on the website. Otherwise, you can simply scroll through all of the tutorials if you just want to browse and see what's on the website. Nevertheless, we're going to add a new customer in QuickBooks Pro. To add a new customer, you can click on the Customer tab here, or you can go to the icon bar and click the Customers icon, or on the menu bar, click Customers, and then click Customer Center. Either way you choose, it's going to bring you directly to the Customer Center. Now we're going to add a new customer. And to do that, click on the New Customer and Job tab here, then select New Customer. Now here's where we're going to enter the basic customer information. And we're only going to be focused on these fields. So let's enter the customer name, phone number, and address. Now here you have a ship to field. Now if the ship to address is different from the bill to address, then you can add a ship to address by clicking on this drop down arrow here and selecting add new. Or you can click the plus sign and you can add a ship to address. For this example, I'm just going to copy the bill to address over to the ship to address. And when you do that, the add shipping address dialog box appears. You can create an address name. I'm going to change the address name from ship21 to primary address. And the address names are going to be listed in the drop down box that we saw a moment ago. Once you've added all of the information, click OK. And just like I said a moment ago, the address name is listed here in the drop down box. If you add more addresses, then their names will be listed here also. Now let's move on to the payment settings tab. Now for the Payment Settings tab, we're only going to enter in the information in these fields here. If you give your customers an account number, enter the account number here. And if you give your customers a credit limit, you can enter that information in the Credit Limit field. Now one important thing to remember about the Credit Limit field is that if your customer is about to make a purchase and that purchase is going to exceed their credit limit, before you make that sale, QuickBooks will let you know that the customer is about to exceed the credit limit. If you want to continue with the sale, QuickBooks will tell you to confirm it and you can move forward. So if you do have a credit limit for your customers, enter that information in the credit limit field. Now moving on to the payment terms field. The payment terms field is probably the most important field in this section because this is where you indicate when you expect payment from your customer. Now there are several options and the bottom three are pretty self-explanatory which are net 15, net 30, and net 60. That simply means that you expect payment within 15, 30, or 60 days respectively. Due on receipt, another self-explanatory term, uh, when you issue an invoice to a customer, you expect payment immediately. Now we have two more options, which are 1% 10 net 30 and 2% 10 net 30. I'm going to select 1% 10 net 30. And for those of you who don't know, I'll explain to you what that means. 1% 10 means if your customer makes a payment within 10 days, then they are allowed to deduct 1% from the invoice amount. For example, if you issue an invoice to a customer, and that invoice is dated January the 1st, that customer is allowed to take a 1% deduction if they make a payment within 10 days. So if your invoice total is $500 and they make a payment within 10 days, they can subtract 1% from the total amount of the invoice. In this case, 1% of 500 is $50, which means that you will allow them to pay you $450 within a 10-day period from the date of the invoice. If they do not pay within that 10-day period, that's where the net 30 comes into play. 
and that simply means you expect payment in full within 30 days from the date of the invoice. If this were 2% 10 net 30, then they will simply be able to subtract 2% of the amount of the invoice within 10 days. If you have a preferred payment method from your customer, you can choose that in this field here. And if your customer allows you to have a credit card on file, then you can enter that information in here. Now moving on to sales tax. Uh, the sales tax tab is used to set a default tax rate for a particular customer. For example, nonprofits are not taxable. So if you are doing business with a nonprofit, you can select non-taxable sales. We're going to come back to this in another lesson because I am going to go in depth regarding sales tax. Now if you are selling products wholesale, the resale number field is where you're going to enter in the resale number from your customer's resale certificate. That certificate is issued to your customer by state or local government entities. Because you are selling wholesale, that wholesale customer does not pay sales tax on whatever it is you're selling them. And they must have a resale certificate in order for them to be exempt from sales tax. Now the additional info section is where you can indicate a customer type. Did the customer come from an advertisement, a referral, or are they a retail or wholesale customer? If you want to add additional information, you can do that by clicking Add New and adding that information. If there are sales reps involved in your business, you can add their names here. Now the Job Info tab is where you're going to enter in information if you are performing a job for a particular customer. In the Job Description field, you're going to obviously type in a job description. And the Job Type field is where you can indicate whether or not the customer is a commercial or residential customer, or you can add a new job type if you choose to. You can add a job status, whether it's pending, awarded, and so on. And there are fields where you can select a start date, a projected end date, and a confirmed end date. Now you may have noticed that I did not speak about the opening balance field. And that is because I do not recommend entering in a balance in the opening balance field. The reason why this field is there is because if you are moving from one accounting system to QuickBooks, that field allows you to enter in a balance that your customer may owe. However, the reason why I do not recommend entering in a balance is because if you do so, then you will not have the detailed information as to how that customer arrived at that balance. In order for you to have that detailed information, it's recommended that you enter the transactions the same way as they were entered in the other accounting system. Now after you have finished entering all of the information, click OK to save it and your new customer will be listed in the left pane under the Customers and Jobs list. Now in the Customer Information section, you'll have the basic information such as the company name, account number, the payment terms that you set, and the bill to address. And that's how you add a new customer in QuickBooks Pro. If you have any questions, please use the contact form to contact me. Once again, my name is James Fox, and I'll see you next time.